color. And welcome back to the Spells classroom. So today in class, we're going to talk about the New Stone Age era, or the Neolithic era. Before we do that, we're going to give you a little bit of background on what came before the Neolithic. So before the Neolithic was the Paleolithic era. Okay, so this was 2 million BCE, about 10,000 BCE, so around that range. Um, and this is called the Old Stone Age, so it was the first use of stone tools until agriculture. So I've got some photographs from that, and then we'll go ahead and start talking about the New Stone Age, or the Neo the care and why that was so important to me. So, here's a photograph from National Geographic, kind of some drawings um, from the um, Paleolithic era. So, we used art a lot. It's a close up there. But you can see the drawings of animals. Other drawings, caves. So that's just a little information, but the main thing to know is just that that was the first use of stone tools until agriculture. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about the Neolithic era and why that's so important and how that changed human civilizations. Neolithic. Neolithic era. So, the New Stone Age, or the Neolithic era, lasted about 6,000 to 12,000 years ago. Um, so the big thing with the Neolithic was food production. You know, it's hard work if you are having to, you know, go hunt your food and, um, you know, you're, it often led to poor health, shorter lifespans, you know, harder labor for the majority of people. So it's kind of considered the agricultural revolution. So basically just the domestication of plants and animals village life, st still using stone tools, but it was really being able to domesticate plants and animals and have easier access to food. So how did agriculture develop? is what we're going to talk about today. So just having availability of calories determines how people get food. Um, so at the end of the ice age, the plants were thriving. Humans began helping plants along and kind of selecting for traits to increase calories and gathered food. Um, so certain plants were abundant and provided many calories. So humans actively chose those plants. Um, so kind of just looking for calories so they had more energy. Um, another thing that... I don't have a picture of it. Um, so there were certain areas that had certain types of, of food, obviously. Um, so in you know, Asia, they had Southeast Asia, which was the Fertile Crescent, um, which was kind of warming the climate was getting warmer and the wild grasses were abundant. Um, so there they had barley, wheat, lentils, figs, and then they started domesticating animals, goats, sheep, cattle, pigs. Um, and then in just China they had rice, millet, soybeans, 
chickens, pigs, water buffaloes. So each area had a little bit of different things, but these were the things that they started kind of domesticating. Um, in southern and sub-Saharan Africa, for plants, they started domesticating soybean, yams, and for animals, they started um, domesticating cattle. In parts of America, they started domesticating sunflower, and in parts of The Highland New Guinea, they were domesticating taro, yams, sugar cane, so different types of plants and animals were starting to come about uh, in the world. So, along with plant domestication, another really important thing that happened in the Neolithic era was animal domestication. So, an animal will breed where and when, so when they want to get it, they don't want it to be aggressive. So if they want food, they know they don't want to be it to be aggressive. Um, so examples for domesticated animals were horses, cows, pigs, sheep, goats, chicken, ox, Indian elephants. Um, so those were just some examples of you know the animals that were domesticated. So why? Was this important? Why did this matter for, you know, civilization? So, um, the Neolithic Revolution really started to allow a sedentary lifestyle. You're not out hunting, collecting food. You had the food there. It's easy to get. Um, it was also a really need for cooperation and a group effort. You know, each person had a job, specialization. Um, there were social hierarchies, so social classes. Um, the patriarchy was ruled by males, and there was a big population grow growth during this time as well. So what was kind of the result of the agricultural society was that, you know, now that you have all of the, you know, easy access to food and plants, what do you have to do? So you weren't just hunting food all the time. So, kings were there to, to direct, militaries were there to protect, um, priests to protect and record. Um, there were just many different jobs now that, you know, you weren't just hunting foods, so kind of allowed for a society to develop civilization. So, just, and then having animals and agriculture. You know, you're able to start organizing society, um, having military. Yeah. So, during the Neolithic era, people began to settle in one place. So, they started to have you know, different homes and areas. They weren't really moving around as much, which led to more of a civilization. So, so here are some photographs of, you know, what the civilizations might have looked like. So this is the early Neolithic settlement of Kilokita in Cyprus. So it's showing, you know, the domed houses, corridors, workshops, and you know, road leading to the settlement. So they settled there because they were able to kind of start domesticating plants and animals. Having access to water was a big thing, too. And then here's another So man began to change his diet and eat grains and small amounts, um, and then they started really manipulating, you know, the environment around them. So, any questions so far? Okay. So, um, to see the agriculture, you know, was really the main focus here. So, you know, raising crops and animals, and it took a long time to really develop. And, you know, once they had their agriculture in one place, you didn't need to travel around anymore. You didn't need to go long distances for food. You were able to be more sedentary 
and you know everyone had their own job so it's kind of how society became structured so people learned how to domesticate plants and animals and you know which was just training it for something useful um, early people learned to care for plants such as wheat barley peas and lentils the first farmers also domesticated wild goats cattle and sheep um, and then another interesting thing is um, domesticated corn so thousands of years ago an ear of corn did not make much of a meal so it took thousands of years of careful breeding for ears of corn to reach their present size so it really grew a lot so even with you know And with, you know, wheat developing, so things changed a lot. So here was the ear of corn, and now modern corn is much bigger than a quarter, but it was about the size of a quarter. So you know, it took me thousands of years to actually get about this size. Just pretty amazing. Um, they still used, you know, the Stone Age tools that were used in the Paleolithic era. So things like stones, bones, wooden tools, um, but some new tools were added by using copper and bronze, so they were still developing their tools, but, you know, some of those tools were, you know, taken from the old Stone Age. Um, they had more advanced tools as well, um, which I'm going to talk about. So some of the more advanced tools were used for the early farming. Um, and it dates back to around 8,000 years ago that these tools started. So the axe at the bottom was used for clearing flint sticks, um, and they were used for harvesting cereal crops. A uh, flat rock was used for harvesting, um, a flat rock was used for having stone, or used for grinding flour and clay um, and so so it was really um, an independent innovation and cultural fusion so um, you know it led to the development of agriculture around the world um, as societies increased the domestication of animals and plants techniques were borrowed and handed on so more, you know, collaborating, coming together, coming up with ideas. Um, seeds and crops were also exchanged, increasing what was grown and traded. So it was really, you know, there was a surplus of food, um, you know, more dependable supply. And, you know, population growth came from this, which led to social structures and stratification. Um, there was specialization of labor that came during this time. Everyone had their own job. Also, private property was around, you know, coming around, which, you know, led to more complex and hierarchical structures. Yeah, so just kind of thinking about this era and how civilizations have really come about from the development of agriculture and you know domesticating plants and animals really helps you understand how society kind of is structured today and your food and you know, having an area where you are living and settling you're not traveling around anymore you have a specialization job so just something very interesting to think about <laughs> so agriculture did you know require great effort um so long-lasting settlements formed um, early societies grew into civilizations civilizations were the result of many factors so you know population agriculture stability innovation um, cities grew out of cultural sophistication and social complexity so a city is a more large group of people living together um the reason why people wanted to live cities where they felt, you know, there's more specialized workers. 
cities have complex institutions. Some people became responsible for record keeping, um, technological innovations, and cities also offer production and defense, points of trade, economic activity, centers of political leadership, and enabled, you know, the exchange of ideas, information, and values, and religious beliefs. So, kind of leading up to a little bit of where we are today. But we'll talk about um, this era later. So I hope that you enjoyed learning about the Neolithic era, and you learned a little bit about agriculture and the domestication of plants and animals. I will see you later.